In this video, we'll be dealing with question 2.35 from the prescribed textbook. The question says, Exercise 2.1 introduces a study that compares the rates of serious cardiovascular problems for diabetic patients on rosaglitazone and pioglitazone treatments. The table below summarizes the results of the study. Question A says, write the set of hypotheses comparing the rates for cardiovascular problems for the two treatments. B then says, compute the observed difference in rates for cardiovascular problems in the two treatments. C then says, this study is a suitable candidate for applying a normal distribution. If there really was no difference in the rates of cardiovascular problems and the two drugs under consideration, we can use a normal model with mean zero and standard error 0, 0,00084. Using this model, compute an appropriate p-value. And then finally, write a suitable conclusion based on your p-value. Use a significance level of alpha equals 0 0.01. Question 2.35a then asks us to write a set of hypotheses comparing the rates for cardiovascular problems for the two treatment groups. So, the null hypothesis will then be treatment and cardiovascular problems are independent. And the alternative hypothesis will say treatment and cardiovascular problems are not independent. So, when we write this out, it will basically be the proportion of rosoglitazone minus the proportion of pioglitazone is equal to zero for the null hypothesis, meaning there's no difference between the two proportions. And for the alternative hypothesis, the proportion of rioglitazone minus the proportion of pioglitazone will not be equal to zero, meaning there's a difference and that they are not independent. Question B then asks us to compute the observed difference in rates for cardiovascular problems in the two treatments. So we basically have to calculate the proportion of people that took rosaglitazone that had cardiovascular disease and the proportion of people that took pioglitazone that had cardiovascular disease. So this is relatively simple. So PR observed is equal to 2593 and we get these values from the table given in the question over 67593. So this represents the people that took rosoglitazone and had cardiovascular disease over the total number of people that took uh, rosoglitazone. Then PP observed will be 5386 over 159978. So that's the number of people that took pioglitazone and had cardiovascular disease over the total number of people that took pioglitazone. So if we work those two out here, we'll get 0, 0, uh, 0,038362. And here we'll get 0, 0,033667. Take note that it's important that you keep a um, fairly large number of decimal places for accuracy. The question then asks us to find the difference between the two proportions. So that is PR observed minus PP observed, which we just calculated, so 0, 0.038362 minus uh, 0, 0.033667. So the difference between the two proportions is 0, 0.00469. We now consider question C. Question C says, this study is a suitable candidate for applying a normal distribution. If there really was no difference in the rates of cardiovascular problems and the two drugs under consideration, we can use a normal model with a mean zero and standard error 0 0.00084. Using this model, compute an appropriate p-value. So, to compute the p-value, we begin by finding the z-value associated with the difference in proportion. So, as we know, the formula for z-value is our observation which in, case, in this case is the difference in proportion minus our mean over our standard deviation. So if we go substitute our values in, you'll see that is 0 0.00469. The mean is zero. Standard deviation is 0 0.0084. And that gives us a Z value of 5.58. Okay, so if we draw the distribution, the biggest uh, number in the z-table is 3.5 and that is associated with a probability of 0 0.9998 so our p-value is therefore equal to 1 minus 0 0.9998 
which is 0 0.0002. However, because this is a two-sided distribution and we're doing a two-sided hypothesis test, we need to multiply that by 2. So our p-value is less than or equal to 0 0.0004. The last question then asks you to conclude, given that you have a significance level of 0.01. So if we look at our significance, alpha, which is equal to 0.01, um, it is clear that our p-value is a lot smaller than our significance, and therefore we can reject the null hypothesis. Reject H0.